In this first video for integers grade 9, we are going to review everything you've done in grade 8. Integers are all negative numbers, zero, and positive numbers that do not have decimals. When you do calculations with integers, it is important to know the difference between adding and subtracting of different terms and multiplying and dividing. When adding and subtracting, you work on the number line. When you add, you move to the right on the number line and the value increases in size. When you subtract, you move to the left on your number line. Let's have a look at a few quick examples. In number one, we start on the value two on the number line and move four units to the right because we are adding so this will be plus 6. In number 2, we also start at the value 2, but now we move 4 units to the left because of subtraction, and the answer is minus 2. And in number 3, we start at minus 2 on the number line and move even more negative 4 spaces, and that will be negative 6. So for adding and subtracting, you need to determine where you are on the number line. When you multiply and divide, you have one term that has to be simplified. And for that, you have two steps. Firstly, you need to determine the sign of the term. And then you need to determine the value of the term. To determine the sign, I'm reminding you that when multiplying or dividing with the same sign, you end up having a positive value, and when you multiply and divide two different signs, the answer is negative. And when you need to determine the value, you simply need to multiply or divide what was given. Let's once again have a look at two basic examples. In the first question, we are multiplying two numbers, so we start determining the sign, and here we have a minus times a minus, which will become a plus, which we don't have to write. Then, to determine the value, we say 5 times 9, and that is 45. In number 2, we are dividing a plus by a minus, and that always gives us a negative answer. And then for the value, we have 27 divided by 3, and that is 9. Then, you should also already be familiar with squares and cubes. And here, it helps if you know the first few by heart. Square means you multiply a value with itself twice. And a cube means you multiply a value by itself three times. So if we have a look at an example of a fraction that is squared, the numerator as well as denominator should now be squared. And we already know that 2 squared is 4. Then we also know that 5 squared is 25. Here we have a negative on the inside, so that is a negative times by itself, so a minus times a minus is a plus. Then you also need to note the difference between a value that is squared inside a bracket and then a value that's not in a bracket. In example 2, we have minus 2 in a bracket squared, which means minus 2 times minus 2, and that is plus 16. Here, it is useful to also remember that a negative that is squared is always positive, but a negative that is cubed will then be negative again. You can go one step further and say that a negative that has an even power will be positive and a negative that has an odd power will always end up being negative. In example 3, only the 4 is squared and this means minus 4 times 4 which will give us minus 16. Square roots and cube roots are the inverse calculations of squares and cubes. 
So if you know those squares and cubes by heart, you will, for example, know that 4 squared is 16, which means that the inverse of that, square root of 16, is 4. This is because the square root asks what value has been squared to give 16. Or if you know all the cubes, you will know that 2 to the power of 3 is 8, which means the inverse calculation of cube root of 8 will be 2. The last previous knowledge that is important is order of calculations. So you need to know that the order is you always first do brackets, then multiplication and division, and lastly you add and subtract. This means that you always first simplify per term, and then you add and subtract your like terms. Let's go and have a look at mixed examples. In example 1, we have multiplication, division and brackets, so I'm going to start off determining the brackets. So here the minus 5 as well as the minus 9 stays exactly like that, and I will have a plus times a minus is a minus, and 3 times 1 is 3. Now I have one term with multiplication and division, so it is your choice whether you first multiply or first divide. So next I will have a minus divided by a minus, and that is a plus, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. Lastly, a minus times a plus is a minus, and 5 times 3 is 15. In example 2, we now have three terms. I'm reminding you that terms are separated by minuses and pluses. So here we have one, two, three terms. So I'm going to start off simplifying in each of these terms. So the first term is 4 squared, which we know is 16. In the second term, we have minus 5 squared, which is plus 25, with the minus in front just tagging along. And in my third term, I have a bracket as well as multiplication, so I'm going to start off determining the bracket. The minus in front of the term still stays there, and now I have minus 2 cubed, which is still negative 8. And this still needs to be multiplied by 3. The first two terms stay as they were, or you could choose to subtract them already. And now I have a minus times a minus, which will become a positive sign, and 8 times 3 is 24. Here we now have three terms that have all been simplified, so now I can add and subtract. When adding and subtracting, it is your choice in which order you do it. I'm going to choose to first say minus 25 plus 24, because that is minus 1. And then I have 16 minus 1, which is 15. In example 3, I now have a cube root with two terms on the inside. And any root works similar to a bracket. You always first simplify on the inside. So, my cube root stays as it is, and inside my cube root I simplify the two terms. Firstly, the square root of 9 is 3, and then my second term is minus 25 divided by plus 5, and that will give me minus 5. In my next step, I'm going to get rid of the bracket by multiplying a minus times a minus, and that is a plus 5. So now I can add up to get the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 8 is 2. 